Clear Light of Day is a novel published in 1980 by Indian novelist and three-time Booker Prize finalist Anita Desai. Set primarily in Old Delhi, the story describes the tensions in a post-partition Indian family, starting with the characters as adults and moving back into their lives throughout the course of the novel. While the primary theme is the importance of family, other predominant themes include the importance of forgiveness, the power of childhood, and the status of women, particularly their role as mothers and caretakers, in modern-day India. 1. Plot Summary Edit The novel is split into four sections covering the Das family from the children's perspective in this order, adulthood, adolescence and early adulthood, childhood, and a final return to an adult perspective in the final chapter. The story centers on the Das family, who have grown apart with adulthood. It starts with Tara, whose husband Bakul is India's ambassador to the U.S., greeting her sister Bimla Bim, who lives in the family's old Delhi home, teaching history and taking care of their autistic brother Baba. Their conversation eventually comes to Raja, their brother who lives in Hyderabad. Bim, not wanting to go to the wedding of Raja's daughter, shows Tara an old letter from when Raja became her landlord, in which he unintentionally insulted her after the death of his father-in-law, the previous landlord. The section closes with the two sisters visiting the neighbors, the Misras. 3. In part 2 of the novel, the setting switches to partition-era India, when the characters are adolescents in the house. Raja is severely ill with tuberculosis and is left to Bim's ministrations. And Mira, Mira Masi. Their supposed caretaker after the death of the children's often absent parents, dies of alcoholism. Earlier, Raja's fascination with Urdu attracts the attention of the family's Muslim landlord, Haider Ali, whom Raja idolizes. After recovering from TB, Raja follows Haider Ali to Hyderabad. Tara escapes from the situation through marriage to Bakul, leaving Bim to provide for Baba alone, in the midst of the partition and the death of Gandhi. 4. In Part 3 Bim, Raja and Tara are depicted awaiting the birth of their brother Baba in pre-partition India. And Mira, widowed by her husband and mistreated by her in-laws, is brought in to help with Baba, who is autistic, and to raise the children. Raja is fascinated with poetry. He shares a close bond with Bim, the head girl at school, although they often exclude Tara. Tara wants to be a mother, although this fact brings ridicule from Raja and Bim, who want to be heroes. 5. The final section returns to modern India and shows Tara confronting Bim over Raja's daughter's wedding and Bim's broken relationship with Raja. This climax is when Bim explodes at Baba. After her anger fades, she decides that family love is irreplaceable and can cover all wrongs. After Tara leaves, she goes to her neighbors the Misras for a concert, where she is touched by the unbreakable relationship they seem to have. She tells Tara to come back from the wedding with Raja and forgives him. 6. Background. Edit. Desai considered Clear Light of Day her most autobiographical work as it is set during her own coming of age and also in the same neighborhood in which she grew up. 7. She describes herself as placing a premium on setting, unlike other Indian writers. 8. Historical setting. Edit. Partition. Edit. The book is set at various times around the partition in Old Delhi. The tension between Muslims and Hindus are clearly shown by the father's refusal to allow Raja to go to a Muslim university and study Urdu literature because he has cause to fear for his safety. The book also mentions the partition riots as well as the refugee camps. It also depicts the flight of the Alis, the Das's Muslim landlords and neighbors. These tensions often escalated into riots, but not in Old Delhi. The Hindus, claim to India led to the neglect, abuse and often violence towards Muslims in India or Hindus in Pakistan. The nation of India was torn apart in a violent manner, leaving refugees on both sides of the border and mutual anger and hostility. The suspicious nature of the partition is also evidenced in the plainclothes police who felt Raja could be a Pakistani spy. 9, 10, 11. Delhi. Edit. In the book, Old Delhi is frequently referred to as old, stagnant, or decaying. Old Delhi is overcrowded and generally overlooked in favor of New Delhi. New Delhi is considered vibrant, modern and alive. In the book New Delhi is where the characters, specifically Bakul, go to avoid the soporific effects of Old Delhi or even to be connected with the outside world. Bim is in New Delhi when she hears of Gandhi death and Raja finds diversion and entertainment as a teenager in New Delhi. 12. Religious. Edit. The religious undercurrents in the book manifest themselves in two ways, the partition see above and Raja's relationship with the Alis. As a young adult he found acceptance, albeit not inclusion, in Hyder Ali's nightly gatherings. 
His fascination with the Muslim culture, however, first manifests itself when he takes Urdu instead of Hindi, a language he considers banal, at school. Eventually he integrates himself into the Muslim culture and marries Haider Ali's daughter, Benazir. However this relationship is strained during the partition and the Ali's subsequent flight to Hyderabad. 13. Education. Edit. During the book education is mentioned a lot. Not just school, but also in the nightly gatherings at the Ali's. Raja and Bim both go to college, although Raja's education is much more prominent. Even Hyderabad, where he went following the Ali's, is a considered a place of learning in India, it is the home of universities such as Asmania University, one of the oldest in India. 14. Raja symbolizes culture refinement and knowledge, as does poetry. Music. Edit. The primary manifestations of music in the book are Baba's gramophone, Drive, Bisfasa's musical inclinations, and Mulk's singing at the end of the book. The idea of music relating to life experiences is present. Baba constantly playing his gramophone at the same volume with the same records shows the stagnation of his development. Dr. Bisfas refinement in musical taste shows the personal refinement he learned in Europe. Mulk and the Guru show that while life alters our experiences, we are still the same people, as they use the same style but with different experiences shaping their performance. This is confirmed by Mulk complaining about his sisters sending away his musicians, like the partition of India. But the musicians return at the end of the book to accompany Mulk. Tara also mentions her daughter's music but as it develops with their growth. 1-5-16. Of particular interest is what music Desai has Baba play, all the records are from the same time period and he never gets any new ones. But the most potent of these songs seems to be, Don't Fence Me In, performed by Bing Crosby. Every primary character in the book with the exception of Bim finds some way to escape. A song about being free, however, is what angers the one character who, on the surface, had no desire to do so. 17. Separation. Edit. The novel tells not just the story of the separation of a family, but also of a nation. The partition of India is a tangible reality that is concurrent to Raja leaving, Tara marrying, the deaths of the Das parents as well as Aunt Mira, and the separation of the Das family. These familial separations are parallel to the social events leading up to partition and to the continued social upheaval that followed the separation of Pakistan from India. The summer of 1947 is described as tumultuous, it is the summer when Bim takes care of Raja in his illness, the Hyder Ali family abandons Delhi for Hyderabad under the threat of ethnic violence, and the father of the Das family dies. During the previous summer of 1946, the same summer that Jinnah made public demands for a Muslim homeland, the mother of the Das family had also died. The dissolution in the family that begins in 1946 parallels the growing partition movement and the escalation of violence, such as the attacks in Calcutta in August 1946, in response to this division into two nations. In the summer of 1947, Tara marries Bakul and they leave for Ceylon, Sri Lanka, leaving Bim alone to care for the remaining family members. This coincides with the official division of India from Pakistan in August of that same year. The following summer, after the death of Gandhi earlier in January 1948 and the continued flight of refugees across Indian borders, and Mira dies and Raja leaves for Hyderabad, thus isolating Bim further and leaving her to care for those who are left behind, Baba and herself. In particular, each of the three people who escaped Tara, Raja and Aunt Mira used a way of escape common during the partition era. Tara fled the country for somewhere else, Raja fled to a Muslim center, and Aunt Mira left the earth entirely. 18. Language. Edit. Each of the languages in clear light of day represents different things. Urdu is the language of culture, refinement, and knowledge. Hindi is considered every day, mundane and banal. 13. Additionally the repeated examples of poetry emphasize the beauty of the one language compared to the other as more often than not they are in Urdu. Raja expounds how an Urdu poet could do that in a single couplet. Urdu symbolizes Raja and the Ali's culture and sophistication. 19. 20. Nature. Edit. Nature is omnipresent in Anita Desai's clear light of day. The children are constantly in the garden to escape the stuffy interior. Gatherings happen outside, such as at Hyder Ali's house and the Misras. Tara's guilt is physically represented by bees. Nature is present even on clothes and in the poetry that Bim and Raja recite. It is significant that the novel begins with a description of the garden the coals began to call before daylight, and Anita Desai clearly places an emphasis on setting. Nature in the novel is a source of entertainment, but more significantly, it is often analogous to the relationships and actions of the characters.
The first function of nature in the novel is as a source of entertainment and learning for the Das children. The first instance of this is when Tara, at the very beginning of the story, thinking she has seen a pearl, finds a snail instead and plays with it, as she did when they were children, performing the rites of childhood over the creature. A few pages later, Tara muses over the rustic pleasures that she used to derive from the garden, longing to run to the guava trees and find a whole one to bite into. The garden is their source of refreshment in the heat of summer, and the nature-filled surroundings provide Tara with reprieve from the business of her city life. The garden is, overgrown, neglected, and, uncontrolled, not perfect and square, so she feels like she can relax and forget about her engagement book. It also shows the contrast between Tara and Bim. Nature's second function in the novel is to mirror or complement the actions or feelings of the characters in the book. Many paragraphs end with a reference to nature, such as, the dog suddenly pounced upon the flea, or, a coal lifted itself out of the heavy torpor of the afternoon and called tentatively, as if inquiring into the existence of the evening. This offers a parallel between what has just happened in the story and the natural world. The dog pounces on the flea immediately after Bakul tells Bim that he will marry Tara, and could represent Bim's isolation beginning to trap her. The coal calls tentatively after Bim has come to an understanding of herself and her relationship with her family and is finally at peace. It could be seen as her uplifting rebirth. Another parallel we can find is the heat of the summer and the political heat of 1947. The most important analogy between nature and the human world is the garden. At the beginning of the novel, the roses are said to have grown smaller and sicker, they are, dusted with disease. At the end of the novel, there is a dust storm which mirrors the discussion Bim and Tara are having about Raja, and which leaves the garden, shrouded in dust, and everything looking, ancient and bent. The garden, so beautiful and enjoyable in their childhood, has become old and grey as the years have progressed and the dust children have grown apart. Nature in the novel is also beautiful and dangerous at the same time. For example, mosquitoes are mentioned at the beginning as, singing and stinging, and when the gardener waters the garden, bringing out the green scent of watered earth and refreshed plants, minus coral and parrots come, a, lurid, shrieking green, ripping flowers to bits. This carries a warning and can be compared with human relationships, especially the relationship between Tara, Bim and Raja. Finally, nature is used as a point of comparison with the characters themselves. There is a long metaphor in which Aunt Mira and the children are compared to plants and trees, Aunt Mira being the tree that grew at the center of their lives, soon they grew tall, soon they grew strong. They wrapped themselves around her, smothering her in leaves and flowers. She laughed at the profusion, the beauty of this little grove that was the whole forest to her, the whole world. She would just be the old log, the dried mass of roots on which they grew. She was the tree, she was the soil, she was the earth. This metaphor is continued when Baba is compared to a plant grown underground, emphasizing the difference between him and his siblings. It also contrasts with the image that we are given of the Das parents. The roses in the garden were supposedly planted by the father, but neither he nor the gardener knew how to take care of them, so although beautiful at first, they withered. The fact that Tara doesn't know for sure that her father planted them compares with his constant absence in his children's lives. Like the roses, the Das children were not properly cared for which has led them to bicker and row, ultimately failing to understand each other. The cow, warm and soft, can also be seen as the Das parents trying to offer comfort and nourishment to their children, but the cow, like the Das parents and Aunt Mira, dies, leaving the children alone, Raj and Tara longing to escape and bim bitter. Additionally, both Aunt Mira and Tara are compared to birds, at different moments in the book. Aunt Mira, weak with alcoholism, almost ceased to be human, became bird instead, and old bird with its feathers plucked, its bones jutting out from under the blue-tinged skin, too antique, too crushed to move. Tara, when Bim cuts off her hair, looks, like a baby pigeon fallen out of its nest, blue-skinned and bristly, crouching behind the water tank and crying. The idea of a bird too weak to fly is an accurate representation of Aunt Mira, widowed and rejected, and Tara, who is an introvert with no grand ambitions. It seems to point to what Tara might have become without Bakul, and adds to the contrast between the two sisters. Other motifs and symbolism. Edit. Birds. Flowers. Roses. Duality. Light and dark. Stagnation. Women in India. The passage of time. Themes. Edit. Family. Edit. Bim's breakdown at the end of the book results in remarkable clarity of thought. In this insight, she concludes that the bond of family is greater than any other thing in this world, that she felt their pains, and that she couldn't live without them. 2-1.
Forgiveness. Edit. Bim's inability to forgive Raja demonstrates that the deepest hurts come from the closest bonds. 22. However, she does find it in herself at the end of the book to forgive Raja for the insult and realize the importance of family. 23. Adolescence. Edit. A major a part of the book is devoted to the first years of the Das siblings and to how that period shaped their current lives. While Bim and Raja, being the eldest siblings, were sure of themselves, Tara and Baba were left behind, although loved, dependent, albeit in several ways, on others, the youngsters were rarely cared for in their household, then they constantly searched for affection from one another. Their experiences in adolescence were liable for their future selves, including their oft-tense relations with one another. Raja who is selfish and proud, becomes an upscale, pompous man who remains trying to be the hero he idolized, Hyder Ali. Tara is consistently hooked into her husband et al. to form decisions for her. Bim witnesses the degradation of her widowed aunt in her house and therefore the limitations of marriage, and she or he decides to measure a lifetime of independence. Escapism. Edit. The Das siblings are constantly trying to flee their immediate surroundings. This need is fueled by the shortage of attention they get from their parents. Raja starts inclining towards Islamic culture against his family's wishes, Tara first seeks attention from Mira Masi and starts to spend longer with the Mizra sisters, ultimately marrying Bakul and leaving Delhi. Baba also tries to flee his immediate surroundings, albeit during a more unconscious manner, by constantly playing an equivalent music on a loop. These three characters are propelled by the necessity to repress unpleasant memories of their childhood. Bim appears to be the sole one that doesn't want to flee her family. However, because the story progresses, one sees through chinks in Bim's armor. She is consistently hurt by her siblings and wishes to escape, this time, ironically, into the past. Desai's novel Clear Light of Day follows the complicated relationships among the four Das siblings, Bim, Raja, Tara, and Baba, as a difficult childhood, family responsibilities, incompatible dreams, and Indian history bring them together and drive them apart over the course of their lives. The novel is divided into four parts, the first and last are set in 1980, and the middle two parts take place during the siblings, childhood in the 1930s and 1940s, all in the family's house on well-to-do Bella Road in Old Delhi. In the 1930s and early 1940s, the children's mother grows frustrated when Baba, who has a serious developmental disability, fails to develop at an ordinary rate. She brings her cousin Mira, a poor widow, to take care of her children so that she can focus on her card games and diabetes. Mira brings handmade toys, lovingly nurses the children through illness, and generally treats them like the center of her universe. She bonds deeply with sensitive Tara, whom the bolder, closer Bim and Raja tease relentlessly. While Bim and Raja excel at school, Tara struggles, withdraws into herself, and dreams of escaping. One day, a game of hide-and-seek tag brings Bim and Tara face to face with the well in the back garden, where the family's cow once fell and decomposed. Another day, they sneak into Raja's room, try on his trousers, and imagine having the confidence, power, and freedom that their society reserves for men. Later, on a picnic with the neighbors, the Misra sisters, a swarm of bees attacks Bim and Tara feels guilty that she can't stop them. The Misra sisters get engaged, but Bim decides that she will never give away her freedom to a Manthro marriage. Now the summer of 1947, and Bim is on the roof watching fires burn across Delhi from riots between Hindus and Muslims. She runs downstairs to tell Raja, who is bedridden with pneumonia and deeply concerned about Hyder Ali, the family's landlord. After all, the benevolent landlord took Raja in after learning about his passionate interest in Urdu poetry. Due to the growing religious tensions, Raja's father made him study English literature at the Hindu college instead of Urdu literature at the Jamia Millia Islamic College. The Das sibling's mother suddenly falls into a coma and dies, and Mira withdraws and descends into alcoholism. Tara spends all her time away from home with the Misra sisters and Bakul, her future husband, whom she has just started dating, and then the sibling's distant father dies in a car accident. Suddenly, Bim has to take care of Raja, Baba, and Aunt Mira all on her own. Raja refuses to take over their father's role in the family insurance business, but since it only consists of occasionally going into the office and signing papers, the manager Mr. Sharma agrees to give Baba the role instead. Meanwhile, the awkward drive. Biswas tries to court Bim when he visits to check on Aunt Mira and Raja, but she rejects him. Tara marries Bakul and moves away, and after Hyder Ali's family escapes to Hyderabad, Baba finds Hyder Ali's daughter Benazir's old gramophone in his house. 
After months of withering away, hallucinating, and tearing off her clothes in agony, Aunt Mira finally dies, and Raja recovers from his illness and suddenly leaves Delhi to go live with Hyder Ali in Hyderabad. Skipping forward to 1980, Tara meets Bim down in the garden, reminiscing about her childhood and remarking how little the house has changed. Tara has just flown in from the United States with Bakul, who is the Indian ambassador, in contrast, Bim has never married, still lives in the family house, and works as a history teacher at a local women's college. She also takes care of the dog Badshah, the cat, and Baba. Bakul tries convincing Tara to spend the day visiting his family, but she prefers to stay at home with hers instead. She visits Baba, who still communicates through nods and gestures instead of words and spends most of his time listening to songs from their childhood on his creaky old gramophone. After the needle breaks, he throws it away and stumbles out of the house onto the road, but sees a cart driver whip his horse and runs back into the house, horrified. Bim gives a lesson to her students, and they all have ice cream with Tara, who remembers how their mother and father spent all their time playing bridge with their friends while their Aunt Mira raised them. Bim and Tara go back through the Urdu poems that Raja wrote in school, and then Bim shows Tara a letter from Raja. Raja has inherited the house after marrying Benazir, and he promises never to sell it or raise the rent. Bim took such offense at this letter that she hasn't spoken to Raja in years and doesn't plan to attend his daughter Moina's wedding, which is why Tara and Bakul have come to India. Tara, Bakul, and Bim visit the neighbors, the Misra family. The two sisters and three brothers all still live at home, and all of their spouses have left them. While the brothers have spent their lives drinking heavily and launching a series of failed business ventures, the sisters have worked hard to pay the bills. Across the street, Hyder Ali Sahib's old house is empty and falling apart, as it has been since he left shortly after India's independence in 1947. Bim still refuses to attend Moina's wedding, despite Tara's best efforts to change her mind. Bim complains that Raja was rich, fat and successful, when he last visited her and even brought them gifts they didn't want, but in reality, she resents that her siblings live such easy, luxurious lives while she is still stuck at home, taking care of Baba and struggling to make ends meet. Noticing that Bim serves them leftovers and leaves the garden without fertilizer, while spending a fortune on books, Tara starts to wonder if she was wrong to always respect her sister's competence and decisiveness. Realizing how their lonely childhood has made their adult relationships so bitter, Tara apologizes for not saving Bim from the bees and asks about Dr. Bissos, which offends Bim, but she points out that the house feels safe and welcoming now that Bim is in charge of it. When a letter arrives from Mr. Sharma, Bim decides that she is going to sell off the family's shares and refuses Tara's advice to consult Bakul first. She starts treating Tara with cruelty, and then even tells Baba that he might have to move to Hyderabad with Raja, but catches herself, apologizes, and realizes that she loves her family but has to forgive them if she really wants to move forward in life. She spends all night throwing away old paperwork and finally tears up Raja's letter. Tara's daughters Mala and Maya arrive for the wedding, and Tara finally apologizes to Bim for marrying Bakul and leaving, instead of helping her take care of Raja, Baba, and Aunt Mira. They leave for the wedding, but Bim asks them to invite Raja to visit her. The novel closes with Bim attending a party at the Misra's house, thinking about her family's traditions and enduring connections, and resolving to grow back together with them. Clear Light of Day Summary I. One morning in 1980, Tara Das wanders around in her childhood home in Old Delhi, feeling nostalgic. Her sister, Bim, is a teacher and takes care of the house. The two discuss the old days. Tara has been married to Bakul, who works in Indian embassies in foreign countries and travels a lot, and has two teenage daughters. Tara is attractive, but, unlike the intelligent and fiercely self-possessed Bim, she is mild-mannered, pliable, and dependent on her husband. Tara and Bakul are in town for the wedding of Raja's daughter, Raja is their brother, from whom Bim is estranged. The sisters discuss the aging house and have tea sometime after. Tara serves Bakul tea with little milk that is left after the cat is fed, demonstrating Bim's disdain towards Bakul. Their brother, Baba, comes in. He is a grown man but is mentally slow. Baba plays musical records all day long, which worries Tara. She asks Baba to go to the office, which he sadly declines. Tara is sad looking at the state of her brother and declines Bakul's invitation to go out. The needle of Baba's gramophone breaks and the silence caused by it disturbs him so much that he rushes out to the streets, there, he gets distraught by the crowd and comes running back crying. 
Bim and Tara discuss their brother, Raja, and his marriage to the daughter of Hyder Ali, their landlord. There are sour feelings between Bim and Raja, the two of whom used to be very close, and Bim shows Tara a letter in which Raja tells Bim that, in the aftermath of Hyder Ali's death, he will charge her the same rent as their parents were charged. Bim finds his tone insulting and arrogant, she keeps the letter as a token of remembrance and refuses to go to Hyderabad for the marriage. That evening they visit the Misras, their neighbors. The Misras were a rich family fallen into hard times due to their son's debauchery, vices, and laziness. Their sisters, separated from their husbands, work hard to feed the family and yet are marginalized. The youngest, Mulk, causes a scene for not getting to host his musicians or an audience, only Bakul can quell his temper. Bim has them all return home, in order to avoid the Misras. Having to feed them all. Back at the house, Bim speaks of seeing a specter of their Aunt Mira after she died, the two sisters talk of the partition of India and Pakistan, and of the events that followed. 2. In 1947, Bim and Raja are closer to each other than the rest of the siblings. Raja Hero worships Hyder Ali, their landlord and neighbor. Given his aptitude for Urdu, he is invited frequently to their house to browse among the vast collection of Urd poetry. He takes to going there frequently, earning disapproval from his parents, aunt, and Bim. He begins to compare the two households and begins to detest his own. He takes Urdu as his primary language in school instead of Hindi, against his family's wishes. He yearns to go to Jamia Millia, a college known for its inclination towards Islamic culture, but this is against his father's wishes. Mr. Das finally tells him that it is unsafe for a Hindu boy to study Islamic culture during these troubled times. Raja does not know how to refute this, and he enrolls at the Hindu college. Bim, Raja, Tara, and Baba are not particularly close to their parents, who are rarely home. One day, their mother falls ill and dies in the hospital. They are not very affected, but their aunt takes to drinking out of stress. The father also dies in an accident and Raja is stricken with tuberculosis. He is querulous and miserable, and Bim is frustrated by his obsession with the alleys. Raja is particularly distressed when the alleys flee town due to the riots and fires resulting from the partition. Tara spends more time with Misra sisters, whom Bim finds unambitious. Tara meets Bakul there and is love-struck, although Bim finds him pompous, arrogant, and dull. Dr. Bisvas, a young man who frequently ministers to Raja and Aunt Mira, the latter of whom is descending into senile, drunken disaster begins to be infatuated with Bim and invites her to a concert. She is not at all interested, and even though she agrees to a meeting with his mother, she realizes that she is not interested in marriage. Raja is required to take over his father's business, but he refuses. He wants to go to Hyder Ali, who has left for Hyderabad given the communal tension. On Raja's insistence, Bim goes to Hyder Ali's house to see what is going on. Baba sees the daughter's gramophone and records and immediately becomes obsessed. They bring the gramophone, a dog, and a servant back with them. Bakul marries Tara and takes her with him. Aunt Mira grows worse and, after a series of embarrassing accidents, dies in her bed. She is buried in her only sari, which she never wore in life. Now that his health is improved, Raja leaves for Hyderabad to look for Hyder Ali. Baba and Bim are left together, but they are pleased with this development. 3. Mrs. Das gives birth to her fourth and unexpected child, Baba. He begins exhibiting some growth defects, so she calls for Aunt Mira. Aunt Mira, a distant cousin of Bim's mother, was widowed in her early teenage years in the 1940s and was thus reduced to unpaid house help. She started aging prematurely and hideously, and so was deemed unfit for the men of her household. Aunt Mira, disposable to her in-laws, for whom she was forced to work for his payment for the death of the husband, was sent for. The children are skeptical, but they all begin to love each other. She became a parental figure for children, as their parents hardly cared for them. Aunt Mira had the parents buy a cow for fresh milk, but the animal later died when a careless servant did not lock it up and it fell into the garden well. Aunt Mira was forever haunted by this incident, as were the children. Tara develops as a diffident, anxious child while Bim and Raja flourish. Tara is haunted by her childhood incidents, like shooting of a rabid dog and dismissal of a teacher for being in love with a foreigner. Bim who does well at school and defends the principal in her firing of the teacher, becomes a figure of resentment for Tara. As Raja grows up, Tara and Bim spend more time together but their relationship has many fractures. Tara abandons Bim twice in minor events, 
first in the midst of a bee attack and then when Bim forced her to smoke while they dressed up in Raja's pants and discovered a sense of power in wearing male clothing. Tara has trouble forgetting when Bim cuts off Tara's hair, promising her that she will grow curls afterward. Tara begins to grow apart from her siblings and closer to Jaya and Sarla Mizra, as there were levity and life in their house as compared to her own house. The Mizra sisters treated her kindly and would frequently take her out to clubs and other places. At their marriage parties, Bim tells Tara she disapproves of the Mizra girls marrying without proper education, she asserts that she doesn't intend to marry. Clear Light of Day Summary I. One morning in 1980, Tara Das wanders around in her childhood home in Old Delhi, feeling nostalgic. Her sister, Bim, is a teacher and takes care of the house. The two discuss the old days. Tara has been married to Bakul, who works in Indian embassies in foreign countries and travels a lot, and has two teenage daughters. Tara is attractive, but, unlike the intelligent and fiercely self-possessed Bim, she is mild-mannered, pliable, and dependent on her husband. Tara and Bakul are in town for the wedding of Raja's daughter, Raja is their brother, from whom Bim is estranged. The sisters discuss the aging house and have tea sometime after. Tara serves Bakul tea with little milk that is left after the cat is fed, demonstrating Bim's disdain towards Bakul. Their brother, Baba, comes in. He is a grown man but is mentally slow. Baba plays musical records all day long, which worries Tara. She asks Baba to go to the office, which he sadly declines. Tara is sad looking at the state of her brother and declines Bakul's invitation to go out. The needle of Baba's gramophone breaks and the silence caused by it disturbs him so much that he rushes out to the streets, there, he gets distraught by the crowd and comes running back crying. Bim and Tara discuss their brother, Raja, and his marriage to the daughter of Hyder Ali, their landlord. There are sour feelings between Bim and Raja, the two of whom used to be very close, and Bim shows Tara a letter in which Raja tells Bim that, in the aftermath of Hyder Ali's death, he will charge her the same rent as their parents were charged. Bim finds his tone insulting and arrogant, she keeps the letter as a token of remembrance and refuses to go to Hyderabad for the marriage. That evening they visit the Misras, their neighbors. The Misras were a rich family fallen into hard times due to their son's debauchery, vices, and laziness. Their sisters, separated from their husbands, work hard to feed the family and yet are marginalized. The youngest, Mulk, causes a scene for not getting to host his musicians or an audience, only Bakul can quell his temper. Bim has them all return home, in order to avoid the Misra's having to feed them all. Back at the house, Bim speaks of seeing a specter of their Aunt Mira after she died, the two sisters talk of the partition of India and Pakistan, and of the events that followed. 2. In 1947, Bim and Raja are closer to each other than the rest of the siblings. Raja Hero worships Hyder Ali, their landlord and neighbor. Given his aptitude for Urdu, he is invited frequently to their house to browse among the vast collection of Urdu poetry. He takes to going there frequently, earning disapproval from his parents, aunt, and Bim. He begins to compare the two households and begins to detest his own. He takes Urdu as his primary language in school instead of Hindi, against his family's wishes. He yearns to go to Jamia Milia, a college known for its inclination towards Islamic culture, but this is against his father's wishes. Mr. Das finally tells him that it is unsafe for a Hindu boy to study Islamic culture during these troubled times. Raja does not know how to refute this, and he enrolls at the Hindu college. Bim, Raja, Tara, and Baba are not particularly close to their parents, who are rarely home. One day, their mother falls ill and dies in the hospital. They are not very affected, but their aunt takes to drinking out of stress. The father also dies in an accident and Raja is stricken with tuberculosis. He is querulous and miserable, and Bim is frustrated by his obsession with the alleys. Raja is particularly distressed when the alleys flee town due to the riots and fires resulting from the partition. Tara spends more time with Misra sisters, whom Bim finds unambitious. Tara meets Bakul there and is love-struck, although Bim finds him pompous, arrogant, and dull. Dr. Bisvas, a young man who frequently ministers to Raja and Aunt Mira, the latter of whom is descending into senile, Drunken disaster begins to be infatuated with Bim and invites her to a concert. She is not at all interested, and even though she agrees to a meeting with his mother, she realizes that she is not interested in marriage. Raja is required to take over his father's business, but he refuses. He wants to go to Hyder Ali, who has left for Hyderabad given the communal tension. 
On Raj's insistence, Bim goes to Hyder Ali's house to see what is going on. Baba sees the daughter's gramophone and records and immediately becomes obsessed. They bring the gramophone, a dog, and a servant back with them. Bakul marries Tara and takes her with him. And Mira grows worse and, after a series of embarrassing accidents, dies in her bed. She is buried in her only sari, which she never wore in life. Now that his health is improved, Raja leaves for Hyderabad to look for Hyder Ali. Baba and Bim are left together, but they are pleased with this development. 3. Mrs. Das gives birth to her fourth and unexpected child, Baba. He begins exhibiting some growth defects, so she calls for Aunt Mira. Aunt Mira, a distant cousin of Bim's mother, was widowed in her early teenage years in the 1940s and was thus reduced to unpaid house help. She started aging prematurely and hideously, and so was deemed unfit for the men of her household. Aunt Mira, disposable to her in-laws, for whom she was forced to work for his payment for the death of the husband, was sent for. The children are skeptical, but they all begin to love each other. She became a parental figure for children, as their parents hardly cared for them. Aunt Mira had the parents buy a cow for fresh milk, but the animal later died when a careless servant did not lock it up and it fell into the garden. Well, Aunt Mira was forever haunted by this incident, as were the children. Tara develops as a diffident, anxious child while Bim and Raja flourish. Tara is haunted by her childhood incidents, like shooting of a rabid dog and dismissal of a teacher for being in love with a foreigner. Bim, who does well at school and defends the principal in her firing of the teacher, becomes a figure of resentment for Tara. As Raja grows up, Tara and Bim spend more time together but their relationship has many fractures. Tara abandons Bim twice in minor events, first in the midst of a bee attack and then when Bim forced her to smoke while they dressed up in Raja's pants and discovered a sense of power in wearing male clothing. Tara has trouble forgetting when Bim cuts off Tara's hair, promising her that she will grow curls afterward. Tear begins to grow apart from her siblings and closer to Jaya and Sarla Misra, as there were levity and life in their house as compared to her own house. The Misra sisters treated her kindly and would frequently take her out to clubs and other places. At their marriage parties, Bim tells Tara she disapproves of the Misra girls marrying without proper education, she asserts that she doesn't intend to marry. IV. Tara tries to make Bim forgive Raja, but she won't relent. She also learns of Bim's financial problems and wonders how she is coping. Bim grows restless and angry and begins to snap at everyone, particularly when a letter from her father's company comes about financial decisions. She is angry at Raja for leaving her like this and snaps at Baba, who doesn't respond. Tara and Bakul try to convince Bim to seek out Raja's help, or at least Bakul's, but she does not relent. The sweltering night before the wedding, Bim realizes that she has been taking her anger out on Baba, and that is unacceptable to her. She begins to think deeply about her siblings and how tightly their lives are interwoven. After looking through some of Raja's old poems and looking at an excerpt from an Indian saga, she finds that she can forgive Raja after all. She is overcome by a sense of wholeness and peace. The next day, Bakul, Tara, and their daughters, who'd arrived recently, prepare to depart for the wedding. As Tara leaves for the wedding, Bim tells her that, while she and Baba are not coming to the wedding because they do not leave the house anymore, she would love if Raja came back here and brought the whole family. That evening, Bim and Baba attend a concert at Misra Garden, and Bim realizes that families, despite their disputes, eventually come together. Clear Light of Day Character List Bim La Das Bim Bim is the eldest sister in the Das household. She lives in the house she lived in as a child with her family and runs it now. She is a history teacher and a great advocate of independence and individuality. She is said to have aged prematurely due to stress surrounding her household. She takes care of her brother and sick aunt even when everyone else deserts her. She wrestles with her anger towards her brother Raja, but she comes to forgive him and find peace in her tempestuous family relations by the end of the novel. Raja Das Raja is Bim's younger brother, they used to be very close to each other in their earlier years. Raja is intelligent, romantic, and has great passion for Urdu poetry. He hero worships Hyder Ali, their Muslim neighbor and landlord. He is arrogant, irresponsible, ambitious, and occasionally insensitive. He later marries Benazir, Hyder Ali's daughter, and leaves his siblings in Old Delhi. Tara. Tara is the second youngest child of the Das household. She is pretty and sweet, but she is also less intellectual and confident than Bim. 
As a child, she hated going to school, and so she decided not to pursue higher education. Her only ambition was to be a mother, for which her elder siblings jeered her. She marries Bakul as a young woman and leaves India, living in various places abroad although she visits often. She has anxiety and avoids confrontation, but occasionally demonstrates more self-possession than Bim and Bakul give her credit for. Baba. Baba is the youngest child of the Das household. He is mentally underdeveloped, and thus entirely dependent on Bim. Baba doesn't talk but he seems to understand others. He likes playing songs on the gramophone all day long and is agitated when he is unable to do so. Bakul. Bakul is Tara's husband and a diplomat. He is arrogant, likes to impress other people, and is a narcissist who dislikes when he is not the center of attention. He is disdainful of the Das household and does not want Tara to be affected by its unruliness and fixation on the past. And Mira, Mira Masi. Mira Masi is a distant cousin of Mrs. Das. She was widowed when she was 12 and was blamed for her husband's death, thus she was made to work as an unpaid servant for her in-laws. She begins to age prematurely because of this. She is sent to take care of Baba, but all of children are elated to have her since their parents don't care for them. Many things begin to disturb her. Eventually, she becomes an alcoholic and mentally unstable. Mr. Das. He is the father and the patriarch of Das household, but is absent most of the time playing bridge at the club. He rarely interacts with his children, which is why the children don't really mourn his death. He is a partner in an insurance firm and leaves most of its running to his manager. Mrs. Das. She is the mother of the four Das children. She suffers from diabetes and later dies of it. She has no patience for her children and, like her husband, is an absentee figure at the house. Tara and Bim think of her as commanding and imperious, concerned mostly with her appearance. Dr. Biswas. He is the doctor who treats Raja when he was suffering from tuberculosis and Aunt Mira when she began to fall apart. Biswas studied in Germany and appreciates music immensely, he plays violin, but poorly. He takes a liking to Bim, but she doesn't return the favor. He likes to believe he is a self-sacrificing person, but Bim finds this insufferable. Misra's sisters Jaya and Sarla. Jaya and Sarla are the neighbors of the Das family. They had no ambition, except to get married, and thus didn't complete their studies. Ironically, this is why they are deserted by their husbands. They run and provide for the Misra household by teaching dance and music to teen girls. They like the simple and unambitious Tara more than independent and headstrong Bim. Misra Brothers The three Misra brothers are lazy and unemployed. They were married but their wives left them out of disgust at their lazy lifestyles. They do nothing to run the house and like to make fun of Mulk, the youngest, for his singing. They have lecherous eyes and the Das sisters don't like to be around them. Mr. Misra. He is the aging Misra patriarch. He was meant to leave for studies in London in his youth, but a prediction by a Swami led his father to send him to Burma, where he made a lot of money. He used to be rich until his son's debauchery and laziness led to their bankruptcy. Hyder Ali. He is the landlord of multiple houses in Delhi, including the Das. He is rich, charismatic, and lives next to the Dasas in a huge mansion. He travels around on a white horse, an image that is immensely appealing to the impressionable Raja. He is a patron of Urdu poetry and encourages Raja by inviting him to his personal library and to gatherings of notable intellectuals. He and his family flee to Hyderabad when tensions over the partition arise. Benazir she is the only daughter of Hyder Ali, and she is a spoiled child, she later marries Raja and bears him several children. Little is known of her except that she liked American music as a child, is plump, and likes to eat and cook rich fatty dishes. Miss Singh. The young and vibrant teacher with whom Tara connects, she is laid off for her putatively bad behavior. Miss Stephen. The elderly principal whom the schoolgirls hate and treat poorly in the absence of Miss Singh, Bim's outburst that the woman has cancer is enough to quell the girl's discontent. Summary and Study Guide Overview Clear Light of Date 1980 is Anita Desai's 6th and, according to the author, most autobiographical novel. This novel was the first of three of Desai's books to be nominated for the prestigious Booker Prize. Like other books in her corpus, such as Cry, The Peacock 1963, and Where Shall We Go This Summer? 1975, it deals with gender struggles in a modernizing India. Set against the backdrop of Indian independence and partition, it explores the lives of the Das family, 
focusing on the two sisters, Bim and Tara, whose lives have taken very different trajectories, and their relationships to their brothers Raja and Baba. A work of post-colonial literature, the novel explores the lingering effects of British colonialism on a newly independent India. It also falls into a narrower canon of Indian and Pakistani novels addressing the partition of the two countries following independence. This canon is referred to as partition literature. Divided into four sections, clear light of day is told in the third person by an omniscient narrator. Most of the novel takes place in the Das family home and garden in Old Delhi before, during, and after Indian independence from British rule and the country's partition into India and Pakistan. The story shifts in time from the present adulthood to the adolescence, the childhood and back to the present of the Das siblings from the points of view and through the memories of the two sisters. This guide uses the first Mariner Books 2000 edition located on the Internet Archive. Themes explored in this guide include the struggles of women in modern India, family and nation in post-colonial literature, and trauma, memory, and silence. Clear Light of Day primarily takes place in the Das family house in Old Delhi, where Bim and Baba have lived their entire lives. Back for a family. Visit to attend the wedding of Raj's daughter in Hyderabad, where the family now lives, Tara and Bim retrace family traumas and silences as the narrative moves in time from their adulthood in the present to their adolescence and childhood and back again. The family history of trauma and silence mirrors that of India as it experiences independence and the partition at the end of the British Raj in 1947. The story opens in the Das family home in post-independence India. Bimla or Bim, is a college instructor of history and has remained in the home to care for her younger brother Baba, who has an intellectual disability and spends his time listening to old music on a gramophone. Bim has never married, preferring to spend her time in her garden or caring for family members, including her aunt's cat and neighbor's dog. Tara, her attractive younger sister, has come to visit from Washington, D.C., where her husband Bakul is a diplomat. She does this every three years. This year, however, their brother Raj's daughter is getting married, so she will also travel to Hyderabad, in southern India, to attend the wedding. Bim will not be attending the wedding, as she has never forgiven her brother for abandoning his dreams of becoming a poet to marry their wealthy neighbor's daughter instead. She also cannot forgive him for a letter he wrote in which he described himself as the landlord, since he inherited the rented Das house from his wealthy father-in-law. The second section of the novel shifts back in time to their adolescence, which coincides with the period of Indian independence from British rule and the nation's partition into India and Pakistan in 1947. Bim and Raja are close at this time, sharing a passion for poetry. Raja, despite being Hindu, develops a fascination for Urdu language and literature associated with the Muslim population of India. Raja becomes drawn into the intellectual circles of their wealthy neighbor Hyder Ali. They exclude Bim from this male and predominantly Muslim world, so she devotes her time to her own studies in history. The Das children become even more distanced from their parents when their mother falls ill, and the duty of caring for their aunt Mira who has an alcohol addiction and their brother Baba, who has an intellectual disability, falls almost entirely to Bim. Both parents die, and when Raja falls ill with tuberculosis, it is Bim who cares for him, too. Tara, isolated by the death of her parents and their aunt's alcohol addiction, spends more time with the Hindu neighbors the Misras. They introduce her to Bakul, whom she will eventually marry. Raja's Hindu colleagues at university become suspicious of his loyalties, and once he has recovered from his illness, he joins Hyder Ali and his family in Hyderabad, where they are hiding due to increased tensions between Hindus and Muslims. Chapter 3 goes back even further in time to their childhood and the decade leading up to India's independence from British rule. The three older siblings are awaiting the birth of Baba. Not long after Baba's birth, it becomes clear that he has an intellectual disability ID and possible autism, and the parents invite a poor relation, the widowed Aunt Mira, to live with them to care for the boy. The Das parents are more interested in spending time playing cards at the club than caring for their children, and Aunt Mira is relieved to have escaped the cruel treatment she experienced as a young widow living with her husband's family. Bim excels at school while Tara suffers constantly from teasing both there and at home, where her two closely bonded older siblings often exclude her. Bim and Raja want to become heroes when they grow up and ridicule the younger Tara for what they see as her insignificant dream of becoming a mother. Increasingly excluded by her family, Tara seeks solace in the company of the more compatible Misra's sisters. Chapter 4 returns to the present day and tensions between the sisters come to a head. Tara confronts Bim about her damaged relationship with Raja. Bim reveals that she is struggling financially. 
The pressures of supporting the family and caring for Baba mount, as does her anger at Raja for having abandoned her with all the familial responsibilities. She turns her anger toward Baba, but he does not acknowledge it and instead responds to her in his familiar and loving manner. She realizes how much she loves him and the rest of her family, including Raja, and asks Tara to bring Raja back to the house for a visit after the wedding. The novel ends with a concert in the Misra's garden, 